Merrill Memo with Matthew Dickerson from Dubbo Regional Council. Number 3.5 Triple M, it is Johnny Matho for breakfast. Timely to be talking with the Mayor of Dubbo. Matthew Dickerson. Matthew, how are you, mate? Good, thanks, Matho, and good to see you too, Jody. Great to see you two at Dancing with the Stars. I yeah. talk to you on the, oh, yeah. on, the, on the radio all the time, but I don't get to see you in person, so it's great to actually see you and chat to you in person. Yeah, hopefully the next time you're not dancing. The next time <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, you did very well. It was well. a great performance. Yes, and a big remix of uh, Dubbington <laughs> with poor, long-suffering daughter, uh, for people that weren't there. But... Um, uh, of course, tomorrow uh, a, uh, a very a tremendous day in, in the calendar, Anzac Day. What's uh, what's happening around Dubbo? Well, everything's happening, and obviously it's not just Dubbo. It's all the various villages and Wellington and a whole range of places. But at Dubbo, we've got the dawn service, so 5.30 a.m. I would recommend people be down there for the dawn service. And I'm still amazed at how many people turn up to the dawn service. It'll be a bit warmer tomorrow, but some mornings I've stood there. At dawn service has been very cold. But we get a great crowd that turns up there. And that's a fairly short process for the dawn service. Then at 7 a.m., we or you can go to the Western Plains Cultural Centre. We typically have a guest speaker there. This year we've got Michael Bell, who's from the Australian War Memorial. He's been working there for about eight years as the Indigenous Liaison Officer. So he's going to talk about the contribution that the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island Service men and women have made to the war efforts over the years. So I think that'll be quite interesting. And then, of course, you've got the march, and the march goes from the RSL Club. Uh, they gather about 9.45am there to start marching if you want to be a part of the march and then they end up at the Cenotaph at 10.30am and of course then the main service at 10.30am and again I'm expecting a huge crowd there. I've done a rough head count at previous ones I've stood there at and I, I think you typically get maybe around that sort of 5,000 there which I think is Fantastic. And even the fact that you've got school groups that come along, they're in the middle of school holidays, but they still get dressed in their uniform and they come along and be part of the march. It is a, it's a really solemn day, but I think it's a really nice day to see the community out in support of the wonderful contribution that people have made in our history. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Couldn't yeah, agree more. Yeah, a nice day for, I feel like the weather's, you know, just becoming nice. Yeah, I think it's going to turn it on. Yeah, of course. Now, something that I'm a little bit interested in, Matho and I spoke about it a little bit briefly this morning, uh, is that the Dubbo Council is considering replacing the annual curbside pickup with a pre-booked bulky waste collection. Uh, what's the go there? It really is about, we've said to all of our staff and we've said to councillors, we're trying to avoid a rate rise above the standard CPI. And to do that, we've got to basically look at everywhere we can save costs. And this is just one of those things, and it, it might seem like a lot of money you're saving in this process, but it, it is one of those things that we're looking to save costs in every single thing we do. So it, it's a fine line. Where do you cut costs? Where do you keep providing those services to the community? The b- curbside collection is quite popular, But when we do it in the plan schedule, it does get a bit messy around Dubbo. It does get to the point where you do see large chunks of of, uh, stuff. Some people would call it treasure. Some people would call it mess. But it's basically out on the the footpath for uh, a long time before the collection actually occurs. So just looking at changing that and that would save a few dollars and maybe even keep the the city looking a little bit tidier. So no decisions have been made on that. But this is part of that process with our budget process is get some of these ideas out there, get the community talking and just get some feedback from the community. Yeah, I've got a neighbour that, uh, well, not a neighbour, there's a couple of streets down, just has bulky rubbish out the front all year. <laughs> yeah, personally, I'd be okay with it. Because uh, yeah, I've got bulky rubbish now. So, and I know that you can get your one, you get one tip, free tip for like the financial year. Yeah, that's right. But you've got you to have, have then a, a trailer yeah. or a ute or a friend exactly. with a trailer or a ute. Yeah, mm. it's a bit bulkier. Now, uh, really quickly, any news update with the sale yard? Well, I do want to stress the news update here, Matho, and that is we've made no decision. And the process here is really reviewing all of our business units. We've got different business units. And again, as I said before, it's about trying to make sure we maximise the bottom line for council to try and reduce the possibility of having any sort of rate rise. And the sale yards there at the moment, they are something that on a day-to-day basis makes us money. But then when we look at the depreciation, the asset replacement there, then they aren't a great money-making venture for council. And so we need to review the way we run it. And there's a few issues around the way it's run at the moment. Or we're also exploring the option, as is sensible to do, of leasing it out on a long-term lease 
or selling the sale yards. But I want to stress, no decision has been made, so we're still looking at all these options. We've got an EOI out at the moment around that sale or lease option. And the other thing I want to stress with this, Matho, is I've heard some people saying that the sale yards are a great contributor to our economy and we don't want to lose that. Now, I agree entirely. It is a great contributor to our economy. We've estimated that it contributes anywhere around $80 million for our economy, just from people coming to Dubbo as part of the sale, going into town, visiting a cafe, filling up with petrol, all those sort of things. That's fantastic for our economy. If we did sell it or if we did do a long-term lease, I can't imagine someone's going to pay a large chunk of money for the sale yards and then shut it down. What they'd be trying to do is they'd be trying to increase the business. They'd be buying it on its, as an ongoing concern and then trying to increase that business. In doing so, it might be a greater contributor to the local economy. So there's no question that anyone's going to shut it down. It's really just the operating model in terms of either council or leasing it or selling it. But we want the sale yards to stay there to keep contributing to our economy. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, cool. you're, you're always uh, fighting to get the message out there about exactly what's, what's happening. So we're not suggesting the sale yards are going to be shut down, just uh, someone else is going to run them. I think that's Possibly. That, that's a possibility. And council might probably, still run them. But it's, it's going to be me. It's, 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 incumbent, <laughs> it's, upon, it's incumbent upon well. us as councillors to make sure that we're always maximising the return from the various business assets that council has. Yeah, of course. So I can't run it and turn it into my uh, personal closet. No. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> uh, Mayor of Dubbo, Matthew Dickerson, thank you so much for joining us this morning, mate. Uh, you uh, rest those legs for the next uh, things competition you're in, and uh, we'll chat to you in a couple of weeks. Thanks, guys. Meryl Memo with Matthew Dickerson from Dubbo Regional Council.